So yeah, I, I wanted to just to open the space up today and just to share um, some practices and some support um, with you. Um, you know, there's so much happening here um, in the States, but I know there's so much happening here uh, all over the world in different countries, right? And um, this has been a tough week um, for me as it has been for many of us living on this land. Um, and I am currently um, on um, the ancestral land of the Wampanoag uh, people um, in a city we call Boston now. I'm just visiting. And as I begin, I just um, offer my gratitude um, and my compassion and my love for um, the people who really took care of this land uh, before um, colonization. And I want to remember the love, the care that is still here on this land, on this earth, um, as a testament to the deep power and magic um, and love um, of these original inhabitants and caretakers of this sacred land. And this is also where I want to start because as we move into this work of taking care of our grief, right, through the practices of, of love and prayer, I always start with the earth, right? I start with just turning my attention to the earth, to the land under me, right? Because one of the offerings of land and earth is to hold, you know, is to care for, is to stabilize, to create a foundation, right? And it's also an invitation for us to begin to consider our bodies, right? Our bodies as an extension of the earth, right? I think sometimes with grief and with with despair and sorrow and sadness and brokenheartedness in general, it feels so, it feels like it, it, it feels like it takes us out of our bodies, right? It takes us far away from the earth and I wanna come back to the earth. And my first prayer is to ask the earth to hold me as we begin to turn into the expression and the experience you know, of our grief right, of trying to hold space for this experience of loss and sadness or loneliness, right? So as these experiences begin to rise, you know, and if you want, right, you can shift your attention to noticing how the weight of your body is really connecting to the earth and feeling the, the weight of the body, gravity, really contacting the earth, creating this experience of something solid, tangible, heavy, holding. Something that feels neutral. You know, and you can even just touch the earth. You can just, if you are able to actually touch the ground, the floor, that you're close to, that you're sitting on or lying on and just touching the earth and just feeling how the earth, the ground is always there holding us. Even as we move through this really intense energy that like is always holding us. Right. And as you continue this work, I want you to, and I invite you to begin to reflect on all the beings that love you, right? And you don't have to know who these beings are, but we just open and we just ask all the beings who love us to really show up in the space around us. This includes gods and deities, ancestors, saints, angels, teachers, um, elders, I'm calling in my elders, my indigenous elders, who I feel really strongly connected to the land here. So the medicine people, right, who guide and train me in these practices. 
I call them into the space. You know, I call, you know, my friends, I call my family, you know, particularly anyone in my life who loves me, who's caring for me. I call this, their spirit into the space as well. And I begin to imagine that they're encircling around me. And I invite you to feel how these beings begin to radiate this energy of deep care, like just deep, direct care into the space around us. And beginning to open up to that care as well. Because one of the things that really intensifies our suffering is this feeling that we're alone, that we're disconnected. And this is why collective grief work and healing is so incredibly important because the isolation actually intensifies our suffering, right? But when we open up and we begin to feel, experience the care of others around us, like we begin to understand that we are not alone. And I want you to say that as a mantra right now, I am not alone. I am surrounded by beings who love me. And even in this virtual space, right? We can't see each other, but in this virtual space to say that I am not alone, I am sharing this virtual energetic spirit space with, you know, 140 people from all over the world in this moment. And we're all grieving. We're all experiencing brokenheartedness. We all feel the loneliness. We all feel that rage, the anger, the disappointment. Right? As you begin to name that, right, our hearts begin to open, we start getting closer to these experiences of grief and anger and so forth. And we're also being supported and held and tended to by the beings around us who are caring for us and by this experience of others in the spiritual space from around the world who are also going through the same thing. So in this moment, I really invite you to just open into this truth that in my grief, I am not alone. I am being loved by beings. I am being met by this community in this space, in this moment. And I am being held by the earth. The earth is rising to hold me. And I'm with you as well. And if your breath is accessible for you right now, turning your attention just slightly to the breath, noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. Because sometimes the breath gets really tight when we're actually leaning into these experiences of grief. But again, filling the earth, filling the love of beings around you, filling your connection to all these people right now and joining us from all over the world. Right, filling all of that, beginning to breathe deeply. As we inhale, inhaling all the way down to our seats, to our tailbones. And as we exhale, I want you to imagine exhaling everything that feels overwhelming, that feels disturbing, that feels like it's getting in the way, you know, of feeling safe. So as you release these experiences in the out breath, you're imagining that these experiences that we're releasing is being held and neutralized 
and grounded by the beings around us whom we've invited into the space to care for us. So a deep inhale in, exhaling out everything, the anxiety, the tension, the sadness, the anger, the numbness, the apathy. And then let the tears come as they will, right? Right, if the tears are right there, let the tears start flowing and imagining that the tears are being held by the beings around you, being held by the earth. And trusting ourselves to, to open up a little bit more to this experience of grief. And even at this moment, we can ask ourselves, what am I grieving? Like, what am I grieving? Right? And knowing that whatever we're grieving, we're not alone in grieving. Whatever it is we're grieving for. And sometimes we have to get out of the way of how grief is beginning to, to move through our experience. I am not being consumed by the grief, right? I'm not being consumed by the sadness. That's impossible to be consumed by it. And I know many of us are really afraid of that. That if I open to the grief, and I will be overwhelmed by it. But again, remember the earth. Remember the beings around you. Remember all these folks in this IG live session who is who are moving through these similar experiences with you and with me. Like, I don't have to see others around me to to be a part or to be to or to belong to this experience of collective grief like i am grieving we are grieving i am crying we are crying And sometimes when I'm working with this practice, I can feel the beings around me, whom I call my benefactors. I can feel them moving through the grief with me, really like actually reassuring that I am not alone, that I am not the only one in the world who struggles to make sense of the violence, right, that we have to witness and survive every day. To name that and to touch the earth and to pull our benefactors close in with us in this moment is how we start taking care of ourselves and taking care of the grief, our grief, this collective grief. So just trusting and letting go. Trusting that you are being caught and held as you open to the brokenheartedness, the sadness of everything, the despair. And when we need more love, when we need more support, we're, we're asking for what we need in the moment. Just ask. I 
again, maybe there's fear as well. Again, if you're using the breath, breathing deeply into the body and exhaling this energy of fear out into the space around you for your benefactors to take care of. If you're feeling the triggering around trauma, returning to the earth, returning to this experience of solidity, of groundedness. But really feeling that we're a part of something that we belong to a collective of both seen and unseen beings whom along with us all want to be free from suffering, to be free from the woundedness, to be free from the trauma, to be free <laughs> from people, you know, who don't seem to want to be free, but continually make choices that increase the suffering and violence for so many of us. In this moment, all the shit that's going on for us and our communities and our countries and in the world like it doesn't have to make sense in this moment because all we're doing is taking this space to care for our broken hearts and to ask all the beings around us to help us. You can't get to the work of liberation and justice and action in a way that's sustainable until you do this inner work. Like the healing has to come first. The healing has to come first because it is from our healing that we begin to dream real, authentic, liberated futures. Like not futures that, you know, where we suffer less or where everything seems a little better. No, a future where we're free, where we have access to the resources we need to be well and safe and happy. It is so hard for wounded people to dream a liberated, healed future. It's so hard to dream past our trauma. But when I begin to do the work of tending to the trauma, the grief, the brokenheartedness, then I begin to get visions of what my community, right, what my world can begin to look like. So as I heal, right, in this moment, my vision of the future begins to heal as well. And as I heal, I also begin to become clear about what my work actually is to bring about the most liberated future that I can bring about. Right, and this is the love that's arising in this moment 
this love that actually is helping us to begin to hold the space for what's arising for us. It's the love that actually invites us to ask for help, to ask for support from the earth, from our benefactors around us. It's the love that begins to invite me to trust the world a little more, to trust myself. Right, to begin to trust myself enough to believe that I can be healed. Right, that I can hold space for the grief and the brokenheartedness without the grief and the brokenheartedness consuming, overwhelming me. I believe and know that I can hold anything in this moment without reacting, but allowing and asking for the energetic support from my benefactors and from the earth. Like this is the key here. If you don't take away anything from this time. I want you to believe fiercely with <laughs> everything in, in, your, in your mind, every, every ounce of, of courage and stubbornness and whatever it is, I want you to believe without a doubt that I have the capacity, we have the capacity to ask for the support that we need. That in my darkest moments, I have to ask for care. First from the beings around me and from the earth. And then opening up to the care coming from me, coming to me from my community, from my loved ones. I don't have to do this alone. But there have been so many experiences in my life where I've moved through such intense darkness, through intense depression and dark energies. And I felt like no one, no living being could possibly help me, right? And it's been in those experiences where I learned to reach out to the unseen world, to the unseen world of benefactors and beings who love me, who are trying to get me free, right? And I don't have to know who they are. I don't have to know who these beings are, who these ancestors are, who these deities are. I just open up and say, please help me. Right? And so another mantra, please help me. And this becomes part of the work of prayer here. Prayer in this context that we're practicing in is first and foremost beginning to articulate the need for help, right? By simply saying, I need help. I need something to be different. Like this is the most honest, direct thing that we can offer in our prayer into the space around us, into the unseen world, into the universe itself. I need help. And then secondly, all these beings around me need help as well. My community needs help. My world needs help. My country needs help. But first, I need, I need to be liberated. 
I need to experience love. I need to open to compassion. And again, can you feel that? Can you feel this opening happening? Like this is the key here. Can we can we open and drink fully of the care that's actually coming to us in this moment? Right? And maybe can you even open up to the care that I'm offering you in this moment? Again, for those of you who are joining us, you know, we've invited beings who love us, our ancestors, guides, deities, medicine people, ancestors, whomever, into the space. And we're just allowing ourselves to open to the care that they're offering us. We're connecting to the earth, the land under us for support. And we're, we're practicing moving through this thought that I am alone because we're not. But we're saying, I'm not alone. I am not the only one who's struggling to be well. I am not the only one who feels overwhelmed by the grief and the sorrow and the anger and the frustration. That I belong to a community of beings whom we are all struggling to be well together. And knowing that I have to do this work of connecting to love and care and moving into my own process of healing, if I am ever going to be able to dream a future that is much more liberated than the future we're, than the present that we're experiencing now. I have to, and we have to be deeply involved in our own healing if we're ever going to dream a future that is healed. And if I'm not engaged in my own healing work, then whatever organizing and disruption and whatever work that I'm doing right now to change things may possibly just be a reproduction, an expression of my own trauma. And this commitment to ourselves is the practice of love. And this is how we're able to start tending to, taking care of the grief, the brokenheartedness. If you're still working with the breath, just a reminder, again, returning to the breath, breathing deeply down to the seat, to the tailbone. As we exhale, releasing all the shit that we're struggling with, all the shit that gets in the way of us experiencing balance and wellness and connectivity and belongingness, allowing that to be exhaled in the out breath. And if you are working with the breath, and it's okay if you're not able to really work with the breath in this moment, right? But if you are able to work with the breath, I invite you to also imagine that you're breathing on behalf of all beings, both living and unseen, 
that you're breathing on their behalf, on behalf of beings who can't breathe right now, who are too terrified to breathe or who have lost connection to breath and movement, that what we're doing now is also on behalf of them. That we think about all our loved ones, our friends, whom we've lost to COVID. And thinking about the ways in which they struggled to be with their breath, to hold and to use their breath. And I'm also breathing for them as well. I breathe on their behalf and I am breathing through my own grief. That I am releasing all of the suffering, my suffering and the suffering of those I love and care for and the suffering of my community. I release that collectively through my out breath. And knowing that so much of our work of collective and also individual healing isn't about collecting trauma from people. It's not about being, you know, the sponge where we go around just absorbing people's pain. That's not what we're called to do, right? We're being called to become aware, to notice, to support each other in doing this work together of working through our brokenheartedness. That I can't take your pain away, but I can show up and hold you and support you in working through the labor of taking care of your brokenheartedness and grief. Right, and returning to their prayer work. Right, returning back to what is it that I need and beginning to make that prayer. I need to feel liberated. I need my community to feel liberated. I need there to be more support, more love, more compassion. I, I need all beings to have what they need, to have access to all the resources they need to be well and safe and happy. I want all beings, regardless of whoever they are, I want everyone to be safe and free and happy. And you can even imagine in this prayer how or what it would be like for every being to have what they need to be well. Because it doesn't matter if you're over-resourced in terms of material things. It doesn't mean that you have what you need. It just means you have a lot of shit, <laughs> right? But what we're praying for is that people have what they need, not what they think they want or what they want, all right? You know, but have what they need. What do we need? I want people to have love. I want people to have compassion. I want people to be treated kindly. I want people, you know, to be, to be held accountable, right, if they create harm. I want... I want people to have access to, to good food, to water, to clean air, right? To housing, to health care, right? To good relationships. I want people to have access to this deep trust and sense and safety. I'm safe. And we make that prayer for ourselves. I, I need access to the resources to be well and happy. 
I need the things that will help me feel more connected to community and to the world. I want to be free. I want to be liberated. Again, the breath releasing everything that feels like it gets in the way of being liberated. Release these experiences, these energies, and the out breath. Right, and where is particularly self-compassion right now? Where is this wish, this desire for you to be free from suffering? Where is that at right now? Can you call that into your practice, into your space? That I deserve to be free from suffering. That I deserve to be free from suffering and all beings Regardless of who they are, they deserve to be free from suffering. And if people were free from suffering, or if people had access to the resources they needed to be well and safe and happy and cared for, maybe they wouldn't create so much violence for themselves and for the rest of us. Right? Getting out of this habit of wanting to punish people by praying for restriction, right? By praying for reduction, but beginning to pray for the people who create the most harm by praying that they get what they need. Because if they got what they need, it could and would reduce the violence that they're experiencing for themselves and creating for others. No matter how much I dislike you, no matter how much I hate you, right? You still deserve to have the things you need to be well. Because if you're creating all this violence, you're not, you don't have what you need right now. This is a really intense prayer to make. And we're not all there yet. You know, but to pray that even the people who hurt me, that they get what they need. Even if it's accountability and disruption, that they get what they need. I do not want people to suffer as much as me or more than me. I will never pray for that. I will always pray for and work for everyone to be free from suffering, including working for myself to, to be free from suffering. What is your aspiration? What, 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 what's coming up for you? Like what, what is your prayer? What is your prayer? Because I know everyone wants to be an abolitionist now, you know, because I know that's the new hot shit, right? That's on the menu. But if we're not doing this, this work, this praying, this grief work, this moving through trauma, we're not doing abolition work because abolition begins with how we're working to free ourselves from these causes and conditions of suffering that will reproduce in our work if we're not doing this inner work of disrupting suffering. Right, abolitionism isn't about the just about defunding the police. It's not about disrupting the carceral state. It's actually about disrupting how I police myself, how I create experiences of incarceration in my experience that restrict my 
liberation. If I'm not working to disrupt that, if I'm not praying to disrupt that experience, then I am not doing abolition work. We will never dream a liberated future if we're still being consumed by the trauma. Abolition is nothing but the real potential to enter into a loving future where everyone has access to what they need. So again, moving back through these practices, again, connecting to the earth, connecting to the beings around you, if you're working with your breath, connecting to the breath, inhaling deeply, exhaling the things that we're struggling to be with. Remembering that we are not alone. And I want to also give a really special shout out to those of us who are just deep empaths right now. Um, you know, those of us who have no choice but to, to experience the grief of the collective, the fear, the trauma of the collective, and how overwhelming that is every day for many of us. And that for you, and for you to know that you're not alone, that there's so many of us who are struggling to, to show up over and over to everything that's happening right now. And we're doing that because it is so much a part of our work to hold the space for the collective as we're holding space for ourselves. Just acknowledging that and encouraging you to do these practices, to take care of yourself to connect to the earth, to connect to beings who are loving us, to release over and over, release the shit, release everything that we're holding and carrying, letting it go as much as possible. Right, and as I release, I find myself also returning to this experience of gratitude. And I'm grateful for being able to do this work in this moment. I'm grateful to actually be in the world right now, right? Doing something that I believe is helping, that's benefiting, instead of just adding, increasing, and adding to the violence, the heaviness. I'm grateful for all of you who are doing work right now. In whatever way that that work is showing up for yourself, for your communities, for your loved ones, right? The organizing, the, you know, the holding space, you know, feeding people, clothing people, you know, offering people spiritual practices for all of you who are in the yoga studios right, who are just working through yoga to just try to help folks right now, to help folks through their bodies, to help folks move through the trauma, right? I am offering gratitude and deep appreciation for whatever it is that you're, you're trying to do to help. I see that and I feel it. And I want to say that I love you and I want you to continue. I want you to keep going. Right, remember that you're loved 
Remember that you're not alone. And remember that you're needed. And remembering your boundaries. And I want you to keep going. You know, for all the therapists, right? The mental health, you know, counselors, everyone. Like, keep going. I know it's hard. But keep going. Take care of yourself. Set your boundaries. For all of you who are caretaking children right now, keep going. You know, keep loving, right? Keep calling on the support that you need. You know, for all of you who are just taking care of others right now, you know, um, for those of us, you know, who are taking care of older parents, instance, you know, and other loved ones right now, I want you to keep going. Ask for what you need and just keep going. Like the world isn't coming to an end, right? But the world is being reborn right now. The world feels as if it's in labor and we have to just keep pushing. Like we keep loving, we keep believing, we keep organizing, we keep working, we keep taking care of ourselves, right? We keep setting boundaries, like we keep drinking our water, we keep <laughs> resting, right? You know, we, we keep, you know, just keep keeping on, keep remembering, you know, that the people who are creating the most harm are also suffering a lot in ways that they don't even know. It's easy to be frustrated, it's easy to hate, it's easy to want people to suffer, right, for what they're doing, for the legislation, you know, for, for the violence, for just, like, the shit that, like, they're just putting out in the world that's creating danger for those of us who are most marginalized, right, and excluded, right? But I, I cannot like them, and I don't. <laughs> I don't have to like anyone, but I am committed to wanting them to be safe and free. You know, we just have to keep loving. We have to keep choosing the light as well. When I say the light, I mean what is liberatory, what is generative, what is spacious. Right, I continue to choose to give, to be generous. I choose openness instead of shutting down. And I know that this, so many of us are really just struggling to get out of bed or just struggling to be coherent and struggling to just show up to the basic things that we're, that we have to do every day, right? And I, again, I just want to say, I see you and I love you and that we don't have, we don't have to perform being put together, you know, and, you know, and all the shit that we feel like we have to perform, like get rid of that need and just say, you know what, this is what's happening for me in this moment. I'm going to show up in the most authentic way that I'm going to show up. I don't care, right, if you see me crying. I don't care, you know, if you're pissed off because I haven't returned an email or a text. I'm, I don't care if I, you know, if you're mad because I have to cancel something because I just don't have the energy, right, to do shit. It's okay, you know. Figure out what you need and do it and know that we're holding on tightly but gently and just pushing through this period that things will work out right things will work out like we will get to the other side of what seems like the most intense violence we will get to the other side, but we're not going to do that if we stop loving. If we stop caring. If we forget that the unseen world is also organizing with us. Right? And to be a real abolitionist, particularly in the abolition that I train and study in, which is the abolition work 
of Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, right? Like it is the work of believing that the unseen world is right by my side, wanting me to get free as much as I want to get free. Remembering that it's more than just what I can sense through my sense faculties, that there is another unseen world that also is loving us. That the ancestors want us to be free. It doesn't matter if you think your ancestors were all evil, right? There are some ancestors who are on your page now because they understand that what they were committed to in their life wasn't who they were. And now they want to work through you for a liberated future and just acknowledge that. You know, just acknowledge that there's some ancestors who are trying to make up for the harm that they did by committing to our personal and collective liberation in this moment. So as we actually begin to, to kind of close this session as our time comes to an end, I want to thank you for your practice. I want to thank you for your love, right? And I also want to thank you for your messiness because messiness is also a part of the liberation work. You know, liberation work isn't about looking good and having everything really set up and organized. Liberation is negotiating. It's, it's, it's working through confusion. It's working through not having enough resources, but it's just continuing to work and love. And it doesn't always look wonderful. And it doesn't always feel good. But this is what it means to get free. So I pray for you in this moment that all of those who've joined us in this practice, that you have what you need to continue the work and that whatever we've done together in this session, that this energy just spreads out, radiates out, out, radiates out to all those around us, right? Even to those beings around us who would never want to do any kind of healing work like this, even those beings you know, may they be free from the work and labor we're doing to free ourselves. So thank you so much and may your heart be tended to and just stay with the love and care around you as much as you can. You know, you can keep your benefactors around you as much as you want because they are around you all the time. <sighs> May we all just get free. Thank you all so much. Okay. And this video will go directly onto my timeline um if i don't fuck it up and erase it <laughs> so how about you pray with me right now as i try to transfer this uh without losing it all right thank you everyone <laughs>